Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Aliens and UFOs video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll wrap up this series. I've gone ahead and I've done 10 videos, no less, with regards to your suggestions. So thank you so much for that. I'll give it a pause and then go back to this series sometime later on. Uh, also, thank you for the very kind remarks on my new series, the ones involving mysteries and oddities. It looks like that that y'all are uh, finding it very interesting so I'm gonna go ahead and start that one next so be on the lookout for the new videos there basically I'm gonna do my own videos first and then uh, after that I'll start taking your suggestions on there that way it can give you an idea essentially of what I'm looking for when I do this new series so in any case this suggestion it was interesting because it has to do with almost like a thing where life imitating art and art imitating life in the sense that this may not even involve necessarily some kind of aliens it may actually be humans altogether but still it's interesting to bring up because if you're a fan of the movie the rocketeer then apparently there were some real life encounters with some rocketeers here in the united states sometime in this case the 1940s so all very fascinating stuff it has to do with the flying men of Chihalis and Longview so I'm gonna go ahead and give all the information here and then it'll be interesting to see what your thoughts are thereafter so what were the flying men of Chihalis and Longview well there were two encounters that happened there in Chihalis Washington and then also Longview Washington and again, it happened somewhere around 1948, started as January 6, 1948, to be exact. Uh, the first encounter actually happened with a lady by the name of Miss Bernice Zykowski. Um, she was living there near the outskirts of Chihalis, Washington, and she was there in her farmhouse. And the way she stated it was she was outside her farmhouse. Who knows what she was doing? Maybe just doing standard work, uh, how farm work, anything along those lines, or maybe even taking a break. Who knows? But that's when something elsewhere up in the air caught her attention and when she did so lo and behold she saw this she saw a man flying about 20 feet directly above her barn so quite a sight imagine um, you see something in your peripheral vision you think it's just going to be your standard bird or some other type of item like let's say in the air but no instead you see a man an actual man flying around the barn and the way she described it was he was flying vertically and most distinctly he had a very large set of silver wings on his back now before uh, this starts getting into the world of X-Men where let's say you're thinking that maybe these wings were a part of him directly the way she stated it was no it looked more along the lines that he had some kind of harness attached to his chest and then the wings in turn were attached to the harness so in other words these wings seem to be self-made they were created and then placed on him uh, separate from his body also whenever he was buzzing around the actual farm area she heard a very distinct sound she described it as a whizzing or a whirring sound of some sort and a distinct interesting note she saw this man whoever he was play around with his chest uh, what looked like controls right there on his harness so it seemed like um, these thing this harness had some main operating controls right on his chest and there he was adjusting things on it to allow him to in turn adjust his flight so interesting stuff but also that experience was not just witnessed by that lady Bernice instead there was also witnessed by some other children because lo and behold at the very same time there were some children who happened to be out of school they came across that very same area and they saw the man with her like they saw uh, whatever he was doing, they saw this along with Bernice Zykowski. So much so that it seemed like this was happening for a few minutes that they actually asked permission from Mrs. Zykowski to see if they could get inside her barn area to get a better look. She agreed 
And so they all got together and then just stared at whatever this man was doing, flying and buzzing around. And then after a few minutes of this, that was it. He flew away, at least out of sight, from their location. So that was the first uh, uh, encounter that happened. Now, cut to a couple of months later, April 8th, and you have to go to Longview, Washington. So a couple months later, not too uh, far out, but there was another lady, uh, she went by the name of Miss Viola Johnson. She stated that as she was working at a place called City Cleaners, that was her job, she also again after around 3 p.m., so note that distinct time. It happened with the first encounter, and now it's happening again. So after about 3 p.m., she decided to take a break from her job. She got outside, I guess, wherever that building was, where City Cleaners was located at. And right at that very same exact moment, what she described was she thought at first there were a small set of seagulls flying towards her. Nothing really alarming, right? From far away, at least, uh, when you see something that looks like birds flying, it's just average, everyday stuff. But what was interesting to note is that they kept getting closer and closer, almost as if they were flying straight towards her. And then as they, she did so, that's when she saw that they were no longer seagulls. Instead, very distinctly, there were three men, three separate men, all of them flying up in the air somehow some way and also what was very distinct about them here is that they had some very specific uniforms on the way she described it was Minuteman uniforms um, the Minutemen if I remember correctly those are the 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 men that had uh, like the older almost like Civil War type uniform so imagine something like that with regards to their uniforms she described them also as being gray or grayish in terms of the color and then another difference between the other encounter was while in the first encounter whatever that man was he had a harness and then a set of wings tied to it these three separate men did not have any such wings in fact the way she described it was they were wearing some kind of strapped on motor of some sort so that so that gives you the idea I was referencing earlier the Rocketeer that's what I pictured here imagine them having some kind of apparatus on their back something that I guess would give them some sort of elevation and that's what these men seem to have by the way she too was able to get several witnesses out because um, she was able to alert some of the other cleaners inside the building about what she was seeing they rushed out and one of them a janitor by the name of James Pittman he's the one that was able to give full detail about what they had strapped on their back um, as far as also describing it as a strapped on motor so no wings on this one instead they had uh, whatever that motor was around them and then also they were the ones wearing the distinct Minutemen style uniforms um, there was even one more witness a boy a nameless boy of some sort that saw these men also so this happened I guess a few more minutes and then that was it they too flew away northward at least from their direction at a quote-unquote medium speed and then they were gone no more instance with regards to those encounters but that was everything associated with these flying men of Chahalis and then Longview Washington no further encounters really stating here no other encounters there afterward there maybe was uh, like a newspaper article highlighting it but at the same time that was it like uh, no no one else I guess seemed to pay attention to this information or at least try to elaborate more on it no one else came forward either as far as other witnesses stating yeah I saw these uh, flying men in one area or in another area they saw the guy with the silver wings so it was just isolated to those specific sets of people so but if anyone has any more information about these flying man and then flying men of uh, the Washington area that would be really good to hear there's some speculation that uh, there may have been these two instances I don't I don't think so uh, but there may have been some speculation that in that area it was considered National Laugh Week and so the idea was that maybe some of the people that were stating this were doing it because it was kind of like a prank of some sort like they were 
like the area there the whole week everyone was supposed to play practical jokes on one another so the whole idea was that maybe just maybe these people this the ones at least the cleaners did something like this as a joke but then when it took things to another level like people started to take them more seriously not necessarily where i guess um, let's say news reporters were coming out, uh, articles were being uh, written, but at least there was some attention given. That's when they realized that things were kind of getting out of hand. I don't know about that. Um, it could be possible, but that seems like it's a stretch at the same time. I'm more on the side that maybe they did see something that, that was weird like this. So if there's any anonymous men or man out there from the 19 late 1940s that invented some kind of self-flying apparatus or apparatuses um, wherever they are they've decided to remain silent thereafter but again I tend to side more with the witnesses here that they truly did see these men flying out there nothing really alien like about them because there's nothing involving let's say greys or UFOs but still it was interesting to talk about and share that information here so alright everybody thanks again as always Take care.